If you hold a drum into a bike, it's really how the controls make you feel, you know? There's no slop in the throttle, there's no slop in the gearbox. You just put a little bit of effort in, just move your toe, and boom, it shifts gears just like that. It's a breakthrough! Welcome to the episode of Jay Lone's Garage. Today, obviously, motorcycles. Ducati motorcycles, one of the most storied brand in motorcycling history. I've been a huge Ducati fan. I've owned them for over, God, 40 years. In fact, when I was in high school, I used to dream at night of getting the 450, the big single. I thought that was the coolest bike. Uh, I loved, I got a little 250. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of Ducatis, but back in those days, Ducati were, they're always fantastic motorcycles. They just didn't have well, I guess they came out of Cosmopolitan Motors in New Jersey, and the guy at the Shell station could be a dealer if he wanted to, and you could go order a bike through. It, it, you just, parts, supplies, electronics, just the usual nightmare associated with a lot of Italian stuff back in the, back in the early 60s. Well, that's all gone now. Uh, Audi has sort of taken over here, and just like they've done with Lamborghini, made these extremely reliable, dependable, and of course, most importantly, powerful motorcycles. We're looking at 214 horsepower, over 150. Uh, I, I, it's just an amazing lineup. And uh, we thought we'd show something to you today. You know, when I was a kid, over 200 horsepower in a car was a lot of power. You're looking at over 200 horsepower in a motorcycle, it's less than 400 pounds. I mean, the power to rate ratio is staggering. I, I'm, I'm nowhere near being able to take a machine like this to its limits. When I got my first new Ducati, my Halewood, back in 1983 with the Desmo, that was about 75 to 80 horsepower, lots of torque. Oh my, it seemed like the fastest bike in the world. It's not even, it's not even, not even close anymore. Well, let's meet the CEO of Ducati, who's also a rider. This is what I like. I like when the CEO is not a big fat guy in an accountant's outfit sitting behind a desk. He's a guy who's a rider who looks like anybody else you see riding a motorcycle. Jason Chinnick. Jason, come on in, my friend. Hey, Jay. Hey, wonderful job with these bikes. Pretty impressive. Uh, so tell us what we have here. Uh, this obviously the, well, it looks like a Formula One bike, doesn't it? Basically. Yes. Yes. So it's our new Panigale V4 right. Superbike. And this is the bike that we race in World Superbike. Uh, and actually for 2020, we ended up equipping it with the aerodynamic package that actually is the same one that was on its, the predecessor of the V4R and what we use in World Superbike as well. Well, I saw this, this is what I wondered here. This is not some sort of vague attempt to be a Batman character, but it's uh, actually functioning aerodynamics, isn't it? Absolutely, in fact, these winglets were designed with the plan to actually help increase the downforce in the front end of the motorcycle. Right. And when you think about that extra power, that 214 horsepower, it could be difficult to keep the front end down. And so instead of a lot of electronics intervention, we went with an old school analog technology right. aerodynamics to keep that downforce there without having to have too much intervention. See, usually when I'm on a motorcycle and I hear winglets, there's some sort of dipping sauce involved. <laughs> you know? So to me, this, it, I mean, it's amazing how far motorcycles had come. I mean, I remember the days when Ducatis didn't even have an electric start. You had to kick start them. That's so where I started with them. But always, they were always sophisticated. And what was the name of the Fabio Tabellini? How do you say it? Taglioni. Him? Taglioni, yeah. He was the father of the Desmo Drive, which seemed like the most sophisticated thing to eliminate valve float and all that kind of yep. stuff. So uh, just amazing. And, and, and a V4, I remember the most talked about Ducati when I was a teenager was a bike called the Apollo. Remember that? It was oh, yeah. a V4 Ducati that some people claimed to have seen and we weren't really sure if it existed, you know, because in those days it wasn't the internet. You couldn't get all the information. You had to wait every month for another motorcycle magazine to come out and there'd be one little paragraph or something and then you have to wait all the time. So it, it's amazing how far the technology has come. The fact that you need these wings to keep the front end down is just unbelievable to me. What is the top speed of a bike like this? I mean, the top speed of this is in excess of 200 miles an hour. <laughs> so it's easier to say that. I know. It's gotten so much better than I, well, I'm, I'm getting old, you know. And I, I remember I had one up on the, I was up on the crest. I'm doing pretty good. I'm running 90 miles an hour. All of a sudden, blah, 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 blah. these guys are going by me like, I'm. okay, all right, all right. You know, I'm going to just cool my winglets, slow down. 
have some actual winglets and go for a ride. Maybe in the Scrambler, we'll take that out later. But still, I, I'm always drawn to these just by the technology and by the science and by how sophisticated every, I mean, just the slightest amount of pressure on the brake is, is amazing how much stopping power you get. Because I, again, come from the era when brakes just faded on motorcycles. You, go up in the hills and you have to stop for 20 minutes while the brakes cooled off so you could, could go again. I mean, those days obviously have gone forever. And of course, the electrical problems all but eliminated now. So it, they've really become the Ferrari of motorcycles, aren't they, if, that's, if I can use that, that term. Without a doubt, it has that allure. Right. The best part about it, though, is it's something that's accessible. Right. You know, still somebody that works a little hard takes switch a little bit, a little bit of money aside, right. they can still get one of these motorcycles. And it has that same character and charm and that, that feel that you get from riding a Ducati, even with the V4 package. Right, okay, so we're looking at 214 horsepower. 214 horsepower. And what's our, uh, how many liter? Uh, this is a little over 1,100 cc. Okay, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> okay, that, that's, that's, ama that's amazing to me. I mean, in a big two-liter automotive engine, that would be a lot of horsepower. Okay, let's go to the Street Fighter. Basically, same engine, a little so, different package. Exactly, the same exact engine that actually is in the uh, Panigale V4 is in the Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is that it's tuned a little bit more for torque and a little bit more street riding, rideability. Right. And one really cool bit of technology that's in this V4 engine is that it has a counter-rotating crankshaft. Right. So when you're taking what would, you would think would be a bigger motor, a bigger bike, and you're throwing it into the corners, that counter-rotating crankshaft oh, actually cancels out that gyroscopic feeling, and gotcha. it makes the bike very, very nimble. And what's your horsepower rating on this one? These are, this is 208. Okay. With, like I said, a little bit of bump in the torque, and actually how it delivers the power is a little bit more linear than, let's say, what you would want to use on a track. Yeah. I mean, that was always my dream, but I realized the more I drive cafe bikes, you know, after 45 minutes, I'm like, okay, I got to pull over. And I realized this is actually where I should be because you've, it's just comfortable, get my feet on the ground, and the bars are right here. And of course, the wind keeps you up at above 60 or 70 miles an hour. And it's, a, it's just amazing how, how light it is. And it's about the same weight, approximately? Yeah, actually very similar in terms of weight. And, re, and also when you sit, you sit in the bike, as I could see you're doing. I mean, it makes you feel like you're one with the bike itself. Yeah, I'm not, I don't like these bikes where I feel like I'm sitting on top of it, you know? And yeah. my feet are like this, I'm, I'm on tippy toes touching the ground. Because the whole thing to a bike is not even the way. If you can get both feet on the ground, then you can do this all day long, and it's not going to, psychologically, it's not going to freak you out. This uh, is very cool. All right, let's go to our twin. So to not disappoint the Ducati loyalist, the, the Panigale V2 is actually released for this year, which it's taken a lot of the styling cues from the new V4, mm -hmm. but within even a more compact uh, package and actually we just did the press launch for this globally and this is the first time we're actually seeing these bikes in North America and it's a perfect balance of having that right amount of power performance and all of the electronics that you see on the on the upper end bikes these days as well and what is the power on this one 155 horsepower okay that's I mean that's a tremendous amount I mean of the three I guess it's 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 the lowest but it's still a tremendous amount of horsepower uh, when you realize most of your big cruises are 110 horsepower, whatever it might be. It's more than most people will actually ever utilize, really. Exactly, and what's the weight of this one? Uh, it's around 380 pounds, 385 okay. pounds, and then it really it depends on also how you configure it and what accessories that you put on it to reduce weight as well. Okay, very nice, very nice. And of course, Ducati has undergone a whole new renaissance since they got taken over again, because it's one of those companies that would always get bought by a rich guy who loved motorcycles yeah. but could never afford to put the economics into it. The, the passion has always been there. Yes. It's always, there was just nobody with enough money to go, look, let's, let's go through and clean house and fix everything, connectors, make everything the way it should be. But Ducati people love Ducati, so they bought them anyway. Yes. But now you got the best of both worlds. You got the reliability of, of German engineering with the classic Italian, just passion, I guess, is the word we want. And, and that design that you get from Italian product that you don't, yeah, it, you don't get true. anywhere else. I mean, you look at it every motorcycle, if you look at it from the top down, it almost has that Coke bottle shape, right. that, you call it, that hourglass right. figure. Right. And to your point about the, uh, the improvements on, uh, on the quality, 
you know, this is something that you remember the days of old Ducatis in terms of valve inspections and all that. Yeah. I mean, our super bikes that produce over 200 horsepower are now 15,000 miles between valve inspections. I mean, most people don't actually have a super bike that even hits 15,000 right. miles. Yeah, that's but that's one of the points that we really made an attempt to address is that increasing that so people spend more time riding instead of having it tinker right, on. Right, right. Well, that was sort of the thing with the Desmo, setting those shims, getting it exactly. I mean, you yeah. had to find a guy named Tony somewhere. <laughs> you know, and only guys named Tony could fix them. That was sort of the idea. You get Larry, now, nah, sorry, not going to work. No, it's not going to work. Well, I got to admit, I usually I like to go check out bikes before you have them in there, but I haven't even seen these yet. Are these officially in the country now? Well, this is actually, these are brand new. We just unveiled them about three weeks ago in Rimini, actually the beginning of, right. uh, end of October. And this is the first stop that we've made is oh, actually your cool. garage to show the, the new 2020 Well, lineup. feel free to leave them here. That's not a problem. Not you got problem. it. We we'll have to put a battery in it or two, but we'll see what we can do. That's all right. I'll put a battery in it. That, you know, <laughs> I think that's more than fair. I'll put a battery in it. Yeah, that seems more it's than a good fair. deal. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's check out these scramblers. I haven't been on those yet. This is the the bike that basically gave us and the and the Cafe Racer bringing the scrambler uh, from the original scrambler back in the 70s back into the light. Right here, 60s and 70s. And this is an 800 cc air cooled twin that actually is on the polar opposite of the superbike spectrum here. Yeah. This is kind of returning to that simple essence of motorcycling. You know, I gotta say, if I'm trying to impress people, I, I'll, I'll take that, even though I'm not even capable of doing what the bike is capable of doing. But for fun, I, just sitting on this made me feel good. It's just a nice sized bike, it's extremely light. What is this one, about, about uh, 350 pounds? It's around 370. Oh, it yeah, is yeah. that much. So 370, is. just under 80 horsepower. Okay. As you're saying, very similar to that of your Hailwood. But the fun thing is, I like any machine where I can use all the power all the time. You know, with this, I'm just not good enough. I just I kill, I'm dead. I just can't kill myself. You know, it's like you get to a point where I look at something and I'm there. I'm there already. How do, how do you get here? You know, I'm always astounded when I go up to the rock store up on the crest, and I think I'm just flying, and guys go by me 120, 130, I think, geez, it's amazing. And then, then you just want to go for a ride, you know. Yeah. And that's what's nice about this. These are basically the same bike, or oh, this is a more of a cafe version, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, cafe version, so the, the difference is, is uh, obviously it's got the clip-on handlebars, mm -hmm. but also a 17-inch front wheel, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit quicker in turning versus the 18, right. and then a slight upgrade on the brakes just with a radial master cylinder, so the brakes are a little bit more sensitive, you get a little bit more feel, but to your point, I mean, I commute on a scrambler every day to the office, right. and I have fun. It's just simple, and every time you pull up to a stoplight, this is the type of motorcycle when people look, they just smile. Yeah. I imagine this, is this, are these two the least expensive in the lineup? Yes, they're, you know, the Scrambler is actually under $9,000 for right. the Icon. So okay. it's the least expensive and it allows people access also into motorcycling. Right. And this is something we've been very successful with, is we've seen a lot of people return to motorcycling. You know, empty nesters, the kids get out of the house and they, they remember that moment in their life right. where they used to be a motorcyclist and the Scrambler evokes that and gets them back riding and also new motorcyclists as well. And the funny part is, this is probably faster than the fastest bike you could have gotten back in the 60s or 70s, or at yeah. least right up there. But yeah, easily. In, yeah. And also we've added a lot of technology on these that you don't see, but like cornering ABS. So things that help new riders become safer while they're out there and they have to avoid a bad driver. Now all motorcycles have to meet, what is that, the Euro 4 standard now? Is that what it is? Yeah. You've got to have ABS, you've got to have anti-lock brakes, you've got to have traction control. Exactly. You have to have all of those. And we're even moving into Euro 5. Yeah. In fact, the, the, one of our bikes over there, we just, they're, all of these bikes are all Euro 5 compliant. And so what's Euro working. 5 going to be? Euro 5 is, pushes really strong on emissions. It's basically oh, okay. noise. But, and but it's not like a mom that's right alongside <laughs> you doing this. Okay. That, that's six. That's, oh, that's six. That's Euro yeah, 6. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. And these are obviously all water cooled bikes. The days are the air cooled. No, these are actually air cooled. Oh, they are air cooled with a little oil cooler that's oh, the tucked oil away cooled. in the oh, side I see. there as well. Oh, very good. Very so, good. And it has a different character. You know, the motor is different character. It really different is sound. old school, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Oh, very cool. Five speed or six speed? Six speed. Okay. One down, five up. It's just amazing to me that your street bike is more powerful than your fastest race bike from what a decade ago, maybe. Yeah. I, it, it's 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 mind-boggling to me that. 
the, the, the amount of horsepower they can get into, into these machines now. Just amazing. Well, you're talking about the power to weight. You know, the Panigale V4 actually delivers a power to weight that's a street legal bike that's greater than that of a Formula One car. Yeah. That's incredible. Because I remember back in the 60s, there really weren't any motorcycles that were faster than cars. The Hemis, the GTOs, the Barracudas, every now and then they do a bike versus car test. And the, the bike they always chose was the Harley Sportster <laughs> or the Triumph Bonneville. And those were turning 12, 5, 13, 1, you know? Yeah, they, yeah. And occasionally you, you, they would get close, but they wouldn't be. Now, what are you, in the nines, the low tens oh, or something like this? Easily. In yeah. fact, uh, you know, the people, it's, these bikes are designed for cornering, though, too. Right. It's not just that straight line acceleration. Gotcha. It's how this thing handles within the, within the twisties, which is kind of how we design the bikes. Yeah. That's where we want to ride. Now, this is not the entire Ducati lineup for 2020, right? There's a whole bunch of different models. You Absolutely. Got, how many separate models of Ducati are there now? Well, we have around seven families, and between each one of those families, there's three or four different bikes. But right. the idea is, is that we make a Ducati that anybody can have access to, whether you're into the adventure touring, right. cruising, something to just rip around the city streets, right. uh, a little bit of the heritage vibe from the Scramblers, right. or all the way to the full-fledged sport bike. And so the idea is, is that we know that people have always loved the brand, but maybe we didn't build a bike for them because they thought that this is all we did. Right, right. But the reality is, is there's so much more. And when people see that that character, that DNA is consistent throughout the entire lineup, they fall in love with it. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's I mean, I'm familiar because I've, I've ridden the sport bikes, but I haven't tried these. Can we, can we try the Scrambler, see how it goes? Yeah, let's do it. Let's give it a shot. Well, finally, at Ducati, I can look in the mirror and not see my shoulder. I can actually see what's behind me. It's a breakthrough! You know, I immediately feel comfortable on this bike. I get right on it. There's no sense of uneasiness. No sense. I'm not sure what it's going to do. You know, I'm so used to riding big, heavy sport bikes and super bikes. You sometimes realize you're out of your element. You know, this is... I'm not good enough to make those bikes do what they can do. I enjoy riding them and it's fun trying to come close, but at some point you, you like to just go for a ride, you know, and that's what's nice about this. I, I love this Scrambler. You know, I take my little uh, 250cc Ducati out. Boy, it's a lot of fun because I can use all the power all the time. I know these are the cafe bars, but they don't feel low to me. They feel like normal height. I'm so used to the bars that are way down low. And you get up around 50, 60 miles an hour, and then the air just holds you up. It's kind of cool. It's just so flickable, this bike. It's really nice. The fun thing about bikes is this size and this display, you can just think your way through it, you know? You just think about moving your foot and it shifts gears. You just think about which way you want to turn, and you go there. You know, you don't have to muscle it about. It's not a big, heavy motorcycle. I'm amazed at how clear the mirrors are. I said this before, but there's no vibration, and I can actually read the license plates of the cars behind me. There's nothing like a lightweight machine. You know, you just lean a little bit, and she goes into the turns, and don't have to muscle it around. This is actually a really enjoyable bike to ride. You know, at six speeds, you're always in the power band all the time, so it actually is quite nice. But, you know, the, the vibration doesn't go up as you, as you open the throttle. I think it's safe to say the era of the Nachi gearbox is over. Uh, you know, in the old days when these things were hand-assembled, sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a bad one. But those days are pretty much gone forever. This thing just snicks through the gearbox really simply. It's funny how 800 cc's is now considered fairly small. You know, the, the Harley Sportster was the fastest bike you could buy in America 25, 30, 40 years ago. Well, before the invasion of the Japanese bikes, anyway. And that was an 883, and that was considered a big bike. Now it's, now it's not even in the club. The whole enjoyment of a bike is really how the controls make you feel, you know? There's no slop in the throttle. There's no slop in the gearbox. You just put a little bit of effort in, just move your toe, and boom, it shifts gears just like that. You 
to be quite honest, I, I, I have a lot of super bikes and I enjoy riding them. And I get a chance to ride a lot of the new ones. I really like this bike. You know, this is the kind of bike I want to take for a ride right now. You know, I go to lunch or go see a friend or run a couple of errands just because it's so versatile and so comfortable. And I like that when I open the throttle, I can open it all the way and use all the power all the time. So as much as I enjoy the big, fast hyper bikes, I mean, they are unbelievable. <laughs> Sometimes they scare me. So this is just like a real nice, relaxing, comfortable way to go for a ride. It's a real motorcycle. It looks like a real motorcycle, and it's just a lot of fun. So I know Jason's the CEO, but he's going to have to wait a while before I give this back. See you guys later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>